morning. You are always amazing. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Lolita E. Walker for all of you all who I have not yet met. I am so excited to be here today. I have an amazing topic that I'm hoping you will jump all the way in. Before I talk to you about the topic uh, for today, I just wanted to encourage you to just get up and move. Okay, just get up and move. I'm feeling that type of day. I'm a certified life leadership and executive coach. I am a power speaker, an author, a mommy, and all of the things. And so I come to you once a week just to gift you a little bit of coaching cocktails and conversations. Let me tell you what that's all about. Coaching is just to uh, challenge you with a couple nuggets to challenge your thinking. That's it. I drop a couple nuggets, the ones that you can take. I want you to take it with you. The ones that you are unable to, just leave them right there at the bus stop because somebody else will pick them up to enhance their life. Life, okay, that's what we do. Cocktails is not so much about what you're sipping on, it's more about celebrating the greatness of who it is that you are. And then conversations is the juiciness that we have right here inside of this space. And the beauty is that we fuse it right here on Breakfast with Champions, which is all about motivation, inspiration, and gifting you enough to really progress your day beyond where you're standing today. All right, so today's topic that I want to talk to you about is the leaning tower of you. And I thought about that because, uh, as most people know, in Italy, there's this leaning tower of Pisa. And, you know, when you look at it and you think about this notion of leaning, you wonder sometimes, like, shit, would I go in? Would I put myself in that situation where it could topple over? And I started thinking about how we can apply that to our life. Like, sometimes our life feels like, it's just leaning. In today's exercise of what I'd like to do is put you in a, in a frame of reference of what if your tower of you began to lean? I know I've been there. And so I want to give you that framework so we can talk about perspective. How are you looking at that tower of you that could be leaning, that has leaned, that will lean in the future? And then how do you navigate that thing? All right. That's what we're going to talk about today. And I hope that you can give me a little bit of coaching cocktails and conversations as well. A Facebook user said, I don't know who it is that you are, but it says, finally, I can catch you. I'm looking forward to your gems. I like that. No pressure. Crystal said, good morning from Facebook. Good morning. Good morning. And then hi from Clubhouse. Getting a lag, but I wanted to say hello. So hello, hello. Listen, everybody, if you want to click the link, if you are in Clubhouse, you can come on into uh, Facebook in my Coaching Cocktails and Conversations community. You can come into LinkedIn and you can come into YouTube. And of course, this will be streaming um, on Coaching Cocktails and Conversations, the podcast, as we um, move forward. Oh, I love this. Evelyn said hello. And Naomi, Naomi from Australia. I love that. So the leaning tower of you. What do you think about when you hear that? the leaning tower of you. Sometimes in our life, and that's how I'm going to relate it to our life today, because I want you to be able to take nuggets and challenge you with some soul work in order to put yourself in a place where you recognize that you're not really alone. If you Google this leaning tower, you'll see that this tower leans in about a four degree lean. And I was looking and I was researching just a little bit and it talked about, wow, this project began and by the third floor of building, they knew Ooh, this thing is going sideways. What are we going to do? Sometimes in life, we know that our life, that circumstances, that anything that's happening inside of our life is going a little sideways. I know for me, I have so many competing priorities right now. For instance, I have so many things that's going on right now. And I know that sometimes that can make me feel like I'm leaning off course. Why? Because in our mind, sometimes in our perspective and where we think that we're going, we think it should be a straight line. And we have this vision of how exactly we want our businesses to run, how exactly we want school to go, how exactly we're going to navigate this thing happening and that thing happening. And what does mommyisms really mean? What is it about leaning into your family? What is it about caregiving? All of these things that are surrounding us can make us feel like the tower that is us me standing as a tower is starting to lean. Have you ever been there? Oh my gosh, I know I have. So imagine yourself and imagine you leaning. I want you to look at perspective. What do you instantly see? Now, some people are gonna look at it and say, oh my gosh, I'm falling. Some people are gonna cower under fear. Some people are just gonna get in the bed and just wanna cover their heads. I know I've been there too. 
And some people might look at it like, but wait a minute, how do I get myself back on track? And I'm using this leaning tower inside of Italy to talk to us about, guess what? There was a pause in building where engineers had to go back and say, oh my gosh, what exactly are we going to do? And is it worth us doing it? There was a time when this leaning tower wasn't even open to the public anymore. There was a time where no one wanted to go in. And though construction was around 20 years, I read between 10 and 20. Uh, so I don't know what the real number is, but although construction period was that, it lasted over like between 100 and 200 years before the project was complete. Now, while we aren't going to wait for completion for that long on this earth, what we know is that over time, there's going to be some times where you need to lean in and really pause for a second so that now you can assess how you are going to get yourself back on whatever track it is to help you get to your destination. Today, we're talking about what is it that you can do to help navigate when you, your tower, feels like it's leaning. We're also talking about how are you going to shift your perspective to look at it where it doesn't seem um, that it's always negative. What does that look like and what does that feel like? And I'd love to be able to hear from you on how you navigate that. So Tosh Queen said, uh, it's Lolita with a T. Hey, Tosh, how are you? Always exciting to hear this lady's voice. I so appreciate that. So how do we look at this lean? Now, if you're just joining, we're talking about imagine that you as a tower is beginning to lean. OK, imagine that what's going on inside of your life, all these competing priorities are starting to lean. Imagine your business is not going the way that you want. Imagine school grades aren't going the way that you want. Imagine your house search isn't going the way that you want. Imagine caregiving isn't going the way that you want. All of these things, you're starting to lean. What do you do? The first strategy today is literally, I want you to pause. I want you to pause and recognize that you are not alone in this lean. Either somebody is going through it right now, either somebody has been through it, or they're going to go through it right? There's only these options. And so what I want you to do is I want you to pause and I want you to lean into really understanding, well, what is it that is here? Now I have this, uh, I have this coaching group and one of the exercises that we've done before is these boxes of overwhelm. And I want to share that with you all for, for all of those folks that are new. And in these boxes of overwhelm, we write down all of the things that are competing inside of our lives that are bringing um, these obstacles into our life, like all of these boxes that are there competing for our energy. Imagine that all of these boxes are within this leaning tower because the leaning tower is you. And we start to write, well, what is it in each in each one? So I gave you some options today. One might be it business, okay? One might be parenting. One might be whatever the stressors, whatever the additional distractions, whatever the additional responsibilities are. I want you to write those in those boxes. Then I want you to get clear. Which piece of that is your responsibility? Like, what is it that's your responsibility that's driving this notion of overwhelm inside of your life? We're getting clear, right? We talk about clarity plus confidence equals commitment all the time uh, inside of this segment. I want you to think about it because as we start to think about this applying to our lives, now we can start to uh, dissect and take things one by one by one. They don't feel so overwhelming. What we notice inside of these boxes of overwhelm exercise, should you choose to engage inside of that, what we learn within that is guess what? Sometimes we're doing too much inside of the boxes and we either can do it can delegate or disappear or just disappear from it altogether, right? We have options inside of this thing. And so I just want to encourage you today that if you believe when you see, because it will happen if you don't feel that it's happening now, when you see a lean, pause in those moments so that you can decide what is it that I'm going to do inside of this moment. And sometimes you might not know. Sometimes you might not know. Sometimes that thing might feel overwhelming too. But when you take it in small little chunks, I attest what I've seen with my clients, what I've seen inside of my life is that when you take one thing at a time, it becomes bite size. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do today. What do you see when you're looking at the leaning tower of you? Make sense? I hope so. So now after you pause and after you pause and really say, okay, what is it that's causing me perhaps 
this overwhelm? What is it that's causing this thing inside of my life right here? Now, let's shift a little bit. Who are the resources that's going to help you on this journey? Because now you're clear what these things are. Now you're clear where it is that you want to go. So now I want you to think about, well, who can help me to get on this journey? Well, sometimes it's about you gifting that to someone else. Sometimes you realize that this isn't even my work. <laughs> Let me give it to the person whose work it really is. Let me disappear from it because I don't even need it. I don't need to be doing it. It's driving me stress, but it's not even mine. Oh my gosh. How many of us are holding on to other people's stressors? They're not even ours to deal with. Sometimes you got to let that go. There's some things that you can delegate out. There's some things that are yours, but you could say, you know what? I don't have to be the person that's actually doing this work. Sometimes we believe that we're the only person who can do the work. Not true. Sorry to bust somebody's bubble today. I sometimes have to bust my own bubble and let me know that somebody else can do the task as well. And then sometimes it is ours, but when we get crystal clear on a piece of the puzzle that really is ours, we realize that we don't have to hold on to all of it. And we get really clear that this is why this thing is important. I think it's in here that we've talked about um, why really drilling down three to five of why, why, and why. And then you get to the root cause of really what it is that you want to work on. Now, everybody, this can be your work, your life, your home. So if you're listening, part of the exercise that we do every single week is really to determine how are the strategies that I'm talking about right here really applicable to your life. And if they are, right, your work, your life, or your home, wherever it is, because likely they are. And then I want you to take a piece of that and be able to apply it. It's all about the action. It's all about seeing those. In my Women's Weekend Renewal Retreat, which is, um, oh, it's at the top inside of Clubhouse. But at my Women's Weekend Renewal Retreat, uh, we do exercises to really lean in exactly this type of soul work, to really lean into uh, ex this right here. So if we were to do a leaning tower exercise, then you would really be working on what are those things that are causing your lean. Let's get really clear into it and working through those because it's all about one recognizing. Remember, we talk perspective and then it's about doing the work. Yes. Sandra Brown. Hey, Sandra. Good morning. Good morning. Sandra said, I love the soul work. Sandra's also been to the Women's Weekend Renewal Retreat too. And that there is all about doing the soul work. And sometimes your work, your soul work is the most difficult to do. If there's anybody that wants to pop in, let me know. Listen, this is my first book, The Intersection of You and Change for all of you all who are uh, watching in. But this first book is called The Intersection of You and Change. And I remember when I wrote it, it came out of journaling, actually. I was going through so much change inside of my life. And I just remember just starting to journal. I want to encourage you to do that, even in the matters of you leaning, right? Sometimes you got to get it out of your system in order to make sure that you feel whole. And so I started journaling, journaling, journaling. And as I was, I was also helping people to navigate at the same time. And so this book, The Intersection of You and Change, right, It meet, you meet right here at an intersection. And I remember that I started writing exercises in there. And so soul work begins to develop. As I started talking about some things I was going through, and though while I don't tell you the ending of it, I encourage you to also find where your intersection of you and a change is happening in your life to do these uh, 17 stops of self-discovery. And I, and I say that to you all today because sometimes it's the power of the soul work right? The work internally that you've got to do in order to not only express, but to discover and rediscover whether it's work, it's life, it's home, so that you can now assess and act so that you aren't leaning to an uncomfortable space that is going to paralyze you. I love that. Sandra said, what an awesome, what an awesome statement. This is my first book. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's so true, Sandra. Um, I hadn't really thought of that until you just said that. Oh, that's so great. Yes, because now I can say in my second book, da 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 da. And I can also say in my third book, which is coming out soon, can, um, Dear Anxiousness, Can We Talk? Here it is if you're looking. Uh, I do have the proof for it and it'll be coming out this month as well as uh, some other some other things. But this is amazing because Sandra, I'm glad you said that because celebrating your wins and acknowledging what they are sometimes can help you not lean so far. Sometimes 
recognizing and saying them out loud, somebody telling you, hey, you being able to say your first book, what an awesome statement. That pause right there, when somebody tells you something that's awesome about you and you don't realize it, that pause right there has you think, wow, that is a win. It helps you to reframe your perspective of, is this so difficult? Is what I'm going through so difficult? Look at all that I have accomplished. So where are my strengths and what can I do? Because these three books that I have right beside me that are mine, they weren't easy. But what I know, then there could be a fourth, there could be a fifth, there could be a sixth because I understand how to do it. I've demonstrated that I've done it. So no matter if you're talking about books or no matter if you're talking about work, no matter if you're talking about uh, your home, right? The occupancy of where it is that you live and managing that, whatever it is, pause and look at the wins because you've leveraged some of your strengths inside of those moments. Those strengths are what's going to help you to leap. You know, my favorite affirmation, I know some of you all knew I was going here, is that um, I leap because my faith and my strengths have wings that will protect my fall. I want you to know that. When I'm challenged on writing a book, when I'm challenged on, I'm writing another book right now, um, The Dear Black Girl, Can We Talk, is coming out. And I and there was some delays inside of it because my illustrator, my young, amazing illustrator, um, had some constraints with school. She's young, she's in school, and had some constraints that kind of pushed us over a little bit by way of timing. Right. But it wasn't in my timing, but I had to wait on her for her timing because there's so many other things that have to happen. And so I felt there's this lean. There was this pressure that I was feeling because I had a timeline. But then what do you say? Like, hey, you got this. The assessment is I felt like I was leaning and leaning was what is it that I can do without the illustrations themselves, without having that? What other work can I do by way of the book? Oh my gosh, there was plenty of work that I could still do. There was plenty. I had the cover picture. So why not get that formatted? Right? I can do that. There are things that can be done. And so the shift is what I want to remind you all of. Today, as we talk about the leaning tower of you, I want to remind you that you will lean if you're not leaning right now. Absolutely. There's some aspect of your life that is leaning inside of this moment. Pause. And recognize what is my end game again? What is my end game in this thing again? What is it that I can do now? What resources can I leverage right now to help me do that? And then how can I act inside of this thing? I want to encourage you to shift your perspective. If you have anything you want to add, please feel free to um, absolutely jump in. All right. Um, Jocelyn said, thank the universe and remind myself, I am ready to learn through love. Love that. Max said, recognizing the lean. And Deborah said, for sure, as is when you take notice of an accomplishment and a listener affirms the statement. I know that was pretty cool, right? It's a reminder that guess what? Tell somebody what you see in them. Tell somebody. Sandra does such a good job of that. Sandra will call me sometimes and just say, you know, Lolita, I just want to tell you, I appreciate something you've said over here. Or guess what? You said this and I implemented that. Hey, I just want to check on you and just see that everything's going okay. I didn't really need anything else. Just want to see if everything's okay. Hey, I want you to know that you inspire me. I'd love to encourage you today to recognize that somebody else's tower is leaning today too. <laughs> There's somebody else that's in your circle and their tower is leaning. What if you would gift them some words, not only of encouragement, but hey, this is what I see in you. Hey, you said this thing, but did you really hear this thing you said? I wanna replay that thing back to you. Sometimes it's in your lean that you can help somebody else's lean. Sandra said, learn through love. So awesome. Yeah, because sometimes we move so quickly, right? We have 10 minutes. And so I want to open it up um, to each of you all to be able to express what it is that you feel when you feel like you're leaning. I hear something, but I don't hear it all. Okay. 
Listen, today we talked about a number of things. We talked about the fact that if you are a tower, imagine yourself as a tower and imagine yourself leaning. We talked about in Italy, there's this leaning tower of Pisa. We talked about the fact that it was built on not a solid foundation, right? Not a solid foundation at all. We talked about by the third floor, they recognize, oh my gosh, there's this lean going on. So this is us recognizing that, oh my gosh, something is going on with us. There was a pause. There was a pause to reassess. The engineers reassessed. Imagine you are your engineer. You are reassessing what is it that's happening right there that's causing this lean. I want you to remember that inside of your circumstance, you can pause, you can assess what's happening inside of that lean. And now you can decide what is it that is competing for all of my priorities? What competing priorities do I have and where am I going to focus my energy? Well, sometimes we have to do our boxes of overwhelm. And I talked about that. If you missed it, go back and do the replay or you can listen to it on a podcast. But it's going to be amazing because when you do that exercise, you drive your increased clarity. Okay, clarity plus confidence equals commitment. We then talked about it took them some time. You don't have to rush through that process. There's soul work that happens within that process. It took them a total of between 100 and 200. I didn't get clear between all the research, but 100 and 200 years to finish the complete project when only about 20 uh, years of that was the actual work. For us, it could be two years. For us, it could be six months, whatever it is for you, for you to get clear on where is it that I want to go, for you to do the work internally in order to shift your work, your life, your home is what we're talking about today. Next, we talked about now putting that thing into action, but who are the resources that can help you get there because you don't have to do it alone, nor should you try. Sometimes it's a collective energy that moves this thing forward. Sometimes you get coaching that helps to move this thing forward. Sometimes you go to retreats to help to move this thing forward. Sometimes you clear your mind in order to move this thing forward. Sometimes you get clear on where it is that you're going because you know that there's progress that's at the end of this thing. You know that there's advantages for you that's at the end of this thing. And in the midst of your lean, you might help somebody else inside of their lean. We talked about acknowledging by way of words. And that came from Sandra, actually. That wasn't even inside of what I was going to talk to you all about strategies today. But how powerful is that? Sandra heard me say, oh, in my first book and said, oh, my gosh, can you recognize that that is a powerful statement? When you sit in that, you say, wow, you're right. There was a time where I said, I'm writing my first book. There was a time I didn't tell anybody I was writing a first book. There was a time that I felt all of these goosebumps when I pressed publish. I still feel that every time I publish a book too. But there was that time that I finally got something in my hand that said Lolita E. Walker. And I'm like, wow, we each have a story within us. And while yours might not be to publish a book, yours might be to do a play. Yours might be to uh, lift your business off the ground. Yours might be to finally take that trip by yourself that you've never done before. Yours might be to engage a coach in doing something. Yours might be to go to a Women's Weekend Renewal Retreat in September, the third weekend. I mean, why not? The power that's inside of it is leveraging your community, leveraging the resources around you to help you to lift yourself further and farther. Crystal Dorn said, thank you for this message. My soul needed this today. Absolutely. Sandra said, remember our timing is not always correct. It's okay to reevaluate. Yes, it's okay to reevaluate and shift because it's in that lean that you got the learnings that's going to help you on your next path. I wanna remind you that you're not alone, okay? As I talk to you all every week, I say to myself, oh my gosh, I'm taking something away from this thing too. I gave you guys the the um, example of the book that's, that's not, this is Dear Anxiousness, Can We Talk? But there's a Dear Black Girl, Can We Talk? Which is second, and then there's a Dear Ancestors that's gonna come third. And each of these are poems within my second book called Can We Talk? In each of those individual poems are becoming small books like so, like you see here if you're watching me. And the, the reason for that is because sometimes people read my second book of poetry and they're like, this poem right here, it does something to me. And so I had this thought, I want to make smaller books because what if it's the dear anxiousness that you need? What if you could pair this 
with my words in the audio book. And this is what brings you comfort because this is the, in your lean. This is what you need right now. Absolutely. That came in the lean. That came in the pause. That idea came from listening intently at what others were pulling from you. Sometimes it's listening intently for others to speak what, what they're gaining from what it is that you're gifting to the world and you being able to take that, empower your lean. Power through the lean, everybody, because the lean is happening. The lean might be with you right now, okay? So as we wrap this thing up today, I'll look, uh-oh, I'll Lolita. look at, oh, go ahead. If there was hey, something. Is this time that I can give comment? This is Ramon. You oh yeah, I would me? love for you okay. to. Yeah, I just want to say, Lolita, shout out to you. I wrote something recently about pausing to reflect. I know that wasn't your direct share today. It was about leading, which was great. But I just want to tell you, because I haven't heard your segment for a while due to my fault scheduling. But man, when you speak, Lolita, it speaks to all of us, I'm sure, and I know to me. And I just wanted to shout you out and say hi to you uh, uh, since you're here live on the platform. Please continue. I missed you. I missed you. <laughs> yes. It, it's the same, Ramon, exactly what you're saying, right? It, it's the same. And I think that acknowledging and recognizing um, our resiliency is big. Somebody said, good morning. Good morning. Uh oh, I think that that's um, somebody listening to wildfire on the news. So we're, that's okay. I don't think that you knew that your mic was open. And then we had Crystal who said, power through the lean. I absolutely love that. So listen, everybody, we have three more minutes and then we're going to turn it over to the mom link. But what I wanted to just share with you all is the fact that you are power and you possess the power to power yourself through your lean. You are resilient. We are each resilient, wherever it is that you're standing right now, whether you're four degrees or 15 degrees to the left, to the right, to the side, wherever that thing is, just recognize that inside of this moment, you have new strategies to be able to say, guess what? I'm dusting myself off. I'm sitting inside of the power of my pause and I will reassess where it is that I am because there's too much greatness for me to stay standing exactly where I am inside of this moment. So I want to say thank you to everyone. Um, how can you reach me? Thank you for the question. You can reach me at lolitawalker.com. You can also reach me on Instagram at Hey Coach Walker. I'll do a post about this here uh, in a few minutes and feel free to just add on to the comments because I'd love to uh, engage with you a little bit more. Also, I'd love to invite you all to my Women's Weekend Renewal Retreat. Uh, absolutely. And... Um, that would be amazing. I was trying to read Trisha's comments. And I think what she's saying is, guess what? Inside of her scattered mess of life, inside of her lean, she's able to be taught something and lean into that. So Trish, I appreciate that. I hope I interpreted it the right way. And um, everybody, thank you so much. And you guys have an amazing day. Take these and there's a power inside of your lean. So power someone else as you lean because they too might need that. All right. Thanks, guys.